TIA's Small Cell and Desk Workshop was all about deploying new networks in the field to maximize return on investment with efficient and demand-ready networks. Mario Samard, a group manager of business development at Expo, was part of the panel discussions about the challenges, best practices, and latest technologies for indoor and outdoor densified network deployment. And Mario, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Abe. How I are you doing? I got your today? last name correct. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> okay. So let's start off by asking you, um, from a test and measurement perspective, where does Expo fit into the value chain for DAS and small cell? Well, that's a good question. Uh, five years ago, we started at the early stage of the active DAS. Uh, for us, it was at the early stage. Um, but we wanted to learn more. So what we have done, we went in the field with the uh, neutral host provider. Uh, also some of their contractors as well, and uh, mobile network operator. Our goal there was really to understand what's going on in this part. Uh, X4 has been very good within fiber optic, but more on the telecom side. And now we have to learn a bit more on the wireless side. Uh, we learned a lot, basically. Uh, that was a different challenge. Um, at that point, I have to say that the fiber there was very short, a bit like fiber to the home, but uh, um, even shorter. Um, and from there, we learned what were their challenges and uh, what can we do you know, to help them. One of, one, the first aspect that we have discovered is the method of procedure. So we, we work with them to put together a method of procedure to, uh, to really help them how to deploy the fiber, how to test the, fly, the fiber, sorry, and uh, um, how to make sure that everything would be uh, working fine at the end. The second aspect of it, was now to, um, to, to maybe develop other uh, products or adapt our own products. Uh, one thing that we have discovered at that point was people were very good you know, with uh, RF, testing RF, but now they had to learn a new technology. It's not that hard fiber, but you have to, to, to know how to handle fiber. Um, and therefore, uh, what we have done, we put together a lot of trainings okay, with those uh, MNOs or uh, neutral host providers. And also, we have put a lot more of automation within our uh, units to make sure that you know, the technician that has less experience with fiber would be able to test um, uh, accordingly. So there's this migration towards upgrading cell sites to bring the fiber network infrastructure now closer to the antenna. What is the uh, challenge for operators in this space? Okay. Uh, well, the speed, okay? Uh, everybody wants to have the turn up as ASAP. Um, so everything that we have, um, can, that we can help them, you know, to speed up this deployment will be welcome. One thing that we have seen is the, uh, what we call the closeout package, where they have to put all the, uh, the results and also the pictures of the site. So with our uh, software, Fast Reporter, it helps tremendously, uh, you know, to, uh, to put together this package. So that was one aspect uh, that uh, we have discovered within these challenges was speed. The second one was the, um, the, the, the closeout gap. I talked a bit about uh, a couple of seconds ago. It's the, uh, the fact that, again, those technicians were very good with fiber, now, uh, fiber, with RF, now they have to test fiber. So we help them put together some training package and also being on the site, helping them you know, to, to learn more about fiber. The last aspect of it was the uh, truck roll. Um, I mean, it's the, the amount of money that was throwing in, in, in the garbage, I have to say almost in the garbage, was to have the repeat truck roll. So they have done the, the work you know, uh, first, uh, and, but it was not working. So they have to go back and again and again. I've seen some sites uh, sometimes being uh, out for seven days because they were not able to find out what's the, what was the problem. So doing right the first time, that was one of the philosophy that we wanted to implement with, the, uh, with those new uh, deployments. Mario, there's, a, there's a, a transformation, if you will, between front hall and centralized RAN. What are some of the trends with this transformation? Uh, I see mainly two, okay? Um, and uh, I'll come back again with my, in my experience in the field. I've been on site where you have like uh, 90 feet of fiber and then you have 10 dB less of those 90 feet of fiber. So there's definitively something wrong. Um, what, what we have discovered in some of the case, uh, in some cases, the uh, the people didn't want to test, so they were uh, they, they had a, a no test approach, which lead to a very uh, you know uh, really easy uh, problem to solve. Sometimes it's the connectors uh, that would be uh, dirty or damaged, and right there you can solve probably 80% of the network problem. 
and what what we have done into this uh, into this area for the latency within the same unit okay the user can verify all these connectors he can also find out if a connector has an eye loss or eye reflection he can see also the end to end loss and he can measure the uh, latency or the CIPRI link which those two together are, let's say, I mean, the, the physical layer and the CIPRI test are the main common problem that they're gonna, they're gonna see. And the most thing of it is when you have a cell tower, okay, a crew that is already in the, in, in the, in the, uh, in the tower, you, make, you, you wanna make them you know, um, uh, solving all the problems while they're there, because those guys are very expensive. We're talking about maybe $1,500 uh, per, per, uh, per day. So while they're there, you want them to maximize and optimize what they have done in the field and not having them coming back to solve a very easy problem like a, a bad connector or a, a connector that is not well seated. You talked, um, I think it was you, in, uh, during the panel discussion, talked about the field deployments and network architectures that, um, that vary in contrast uh, in the U.S. or North America, rather, and then maybe Japan or South Korea or even Europe. What are those differences? Well, the differences would be that uh, in Korea and Japan, they are very well advanced. I mean, compared to, uh, to us in Canada or in the U.S., uh, they're already uh, you know, deploying CRAN. The density of the population, of course, uh, justify the business case, but they are already there. Um, China, they are starting as well, okay? Uh, but uh, this is, they're going very fast, and uh, I'm very curious to see uh, you know, what will be the strategy in terms of testing. Uh, I've seen some site, uh, but uh, I mean, it's not one site that makes uh, all together the same, but it's going to be very challenging. Uh, in Europe, they are at the early stage, I would say, uh, probably late compared to the uh, rest of the world. Um, in Canada and the U.S., as you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's going very fast. Uh, we have seen some deployment in the lab and the CRAN deployment in the lab, you know, uh, early stage. And uh, we know that, uh, you know, it's, it's coming very, uh, very quickly to us. Well, we thank you, Mario, for participating in TIA's DAS and Small Cell Workshop. Thank you very much.